Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to convince you that a CVT not only works, but belongs in a sports car. And I'm going to be successful, I'm quite confident. Now, before your head explodes, I still think the manual is the better buy in the new Subaru WRX. And this dates back to the previous generation WRX where the manual had a huge advantage over the CVT. Not only was it significantly lighter, it got significantly better fuel economy, it also was significantly quicker, and it was significantly cheaper. And so it's like objectively, even if you take out whether the manual is more fun to drive or not, which I believe it is, objectively, the previous manual was, no matter what way you look at it, the better vehicle. Now with this latest generation WRX, the gap between the two transmissions is much smaller. Yes, the newer one is still more expensive with the CVT, and yes, it is still heavier, and weight impacts all aspects of performance. However, as far as 0 to 60, they now have nearly identical times, and as far as the fuel economy, they're now basically equal with the manual having a slight edge. A note on that acceleration though, two key points here. First of all, the CVT real world is going to offer better acceleration. If you look at the five to 60 time, because not everyone's just gonna be constantly dumping the clutch in their manual transmission. So if you look at five to 60, the CVT actually has the better time. So real world, you're going to notice better acceleration in the CVT. That said, the manual still does have an advantage, and that advantage is the peak G-forces. So when we talk about acceleration, what gets us excited is how hard are we put back in our seats, right? And that peak force is going to be greater with the manual. How do I know this? Well, if they have equal zero to 60 times, and the reason why the manual is losing out on that zero to 60 time is because it has to take time to shift gears, well, that means the rest of the time it's actually doing a better job. And that checks out, right? It's a lighter vehicle and they have equal torque. So the manual is gonna have a slightly greater feel that's pressing you back in your seat, but real world, the CVT is going to be quicker in most driving scenarios. So again, if it were me, if I have to pick between the two, I'm picking the manual every single time. However, if you need an automatic or if you want an automatic, this is a fantastic automatic. And that's not necessarily despite the fact that it's a CVT. Part of it is because it's a CVT and it's a really good one at that. So when you're talking about performance cars and sports cars, the obvious choice for an automatic transmission is a dual clutch transmission. There's a lot of benefits. So we're gonna go over five key advantages of a dual clutch transmission and then talk about how this CVT fits in with the context of those five advantages. Okay, so the first advantage is the spread of ratios. If you talk about manual transmissions in a sports car, typically you only want about six to seven gears. People don't want many more gears than that in sports-oriented vehicles. And so because of that, your gear ratio spread tends to be smaller versus the dual clutch offerings that are out there. So if you go with an eight speed dual clutch, it will tend to have a more aggressive first gear and it will tend to have a taller eighth gear. The overall gear spread is wider on both ends and that's a big benefit that DCTs have. Well, this CVT has that exact same benefit. Not only does it have a shorter ratio at the bottom end, so like first gear, but it also has a taller ratio at the top end, like eighth gear. So the overall gear spread is better with this CVT than versus the manual. Now, the second big advantage with dual clutch transmissions and the reason why everyone loves them is for their shift speed. So I've put a camera in front of my face and I've moved up the steering wheel so you can see this more easily to demonstrate this. But basically there's two things that you need to know when it comes to CVTs and how they operate. You don't have to switch gears in the traditional sense of going between one set gear ratio and another set gear ratio. A CVT can basically pick any gear ratio it wants at any time, but it doesn't have to. And so you're able to select individual gear ratios because that's what people are used to and that's what people like. That's why that feature is built into CVTs where they have these stepped gear ratios. Uh, so it feels much like an automatic transmission or a dual clutch transmission. Now a dual clutch transmission, you're shifting in maybe 200 milliseconds versus a manual transmission, you're shifting in you know half a second to a full second for each gear change. Well, if you look at the shifting with this CVT, and I'm talking about going from one fixed ratio to another fixed ratio, it is extremely quick. So you can look there at the RPM. I'm gonna have my fingers up here, just kind of give an exaggerated motion so you can see what's happening, but it is very quick to shift. I mean, it's truly just unbelievable 
how fast it is. It is imperceptibly fast, just like the best dual clutches out there. And this is a CVT switching between ratios. So these pulleys are changing their location, and by changing their location, they're changing the gear ratio, and so you have these different fixed gears. And if all you're going for is shift speed, and that's why you say you know a dual clutch transmission is better than a CVT, well, again, you don't perceive how quick these shifts are. I mean, it's unbelievable. So in the real world, if you're just talking about which one is better, it's like from a perception standpoint, that's what truly matters. And the shifting is so fast here that it's hard to say, oh yeah, a dual clutch is the clear winner. Maybe if you look at a trace of acceleration and you plot it out as you're accelerating through the gears, maybe you have a slightly longer bump with a CVT. But again, you don't notice it. And this is a WRX, all right? We're not going for the world's most insane sports car. The transmission just works so beautifully here. And again, you don't have to have these gear ratios, right? It doesn't have to do this stepped function. Now, Subaru basically tunes it in a way that it almost always does when you're going flat out. It picks a gear ratio and it kind of sticks with it. But CVTs, in theory, can just take the RPM, put it at peak power, and just let it sit there, giving you the maximum acceleration. No, it is not peak torque, it is peak power for maximum acceleration. I have videos explaining the math on why if you're interested. So again, just looking at this, I mean, look how fast it shifts between those gear ratios. It is quite impressive. Dual clutch advantage number three, continuous torque. So with a dual clutch transmission, when you're switching gears from one to the next gear, you're opening one clutch pack while closing another clutch pack. And there's always positive torque passing through the transmission. So you're never not accelerating. That's a big advantage that they have versus a manual transmission, because as you shift in a manual, you can't have positive torque going through. Well. That is fundamentally how a CVT works. CVTs are designed so that they change gear as you're applying torque. That's just how they work. They're always able to change the gear ratio, and while they're doing that, you can have your foot on the accelerator pedal, and you're always getting positive torque. Now, the way Subaru does it is they design it so that people who like sports cars get the feel that they expect, which is to have that, you know, notchy click between as you shift. So you put your foot down, and it stays in a set gear, and then steps down to that next gear. And so you do have that loss in torque for that brief moment. I mean, maybe it's still positive. I can't say definitively, uh, but it feels like a nice step there. And that's just done for a feel perspective. Theoretically, with a CVT, there is no reason why you cannot always be applying torque as you're changing the gear ratios. And that's what happens with low RPM and, and low load on a CVT. You'll notice that you, know, you can accelerate and you can just hold that RPM at say 2000 RPM, which means the gear ratio is constantly changing because you're accelerating, but yet you're applying positive torque. Another benefit of dual clutch transmissions that is touted over traditional automatics with torque converters is that they're more efficient because you lock up that clutch pack versus a torque converter which has this fluid slip that's always occurring and thus it's not as efficient. Well, that is true at low speeds. At low speeds with the torque converter, it's going to have slip in it, which is an efficiency loss. But now modern torque converters, including the one in this Crosstrek, what they do is they lock up above a certain speed. So essentially, it's very similar. You have a locked up clutch, you're not having that slip occur within the torque converter, and thus you're maximizing efficiency even when you're accelerating. It'll leave that torque converter locked up. Now, the fifth and final advantage of dual clutch transmissions, and this is a big one, is the feel. One of the big reasons people like dual clutch transmissions, unlike an automatic with a torque converter, say, you can have this dual clutch where you close up that clutch pack and you have a direct link using only gears, you know, everything's locked up from the engine to the wheels. So you have this really direct feel as you get on the gas pedal because it's linked perfectly to those wheels. And with CVTs, people often complain about this spongy feel or this rubby, rubber band feel that CVTs can have. So why can they have that feel? Well, part of it is a perception thing, right? Because when you're in a CVT, the gear ratio can be changing constantly. And so that kind of gives it this disconnected feel. Well, that isn't true for these modern CVTs, especially with torque converters that lock up. So for example, in this WRX right now, the torque converter's locked up, I put it in manual mode, I shift down to you know the set ratio for second gear, and now that is a set ratio with that CVT. There is no slop in there. There's no like tugging and pulling and like rubber band effect going on in there. It's a metal 
belt, all right? So there's a direct linkage from the engine to the wheels, just like in a DCT. As you put your foot down, you have that very direct feel. Is there lag? Yes, this is a turbocharged engine. So of course there's some lag. But as far as the feel, it is going to be identical to a dual clutch transmission because it is a direct linkage. There's no slop in there, there's no play. I mean, it's truly impressive uh, how well this CVT can match the advantages of a dual clutch transmission. Okay, so we've talked about how CVTs can match the advantages of a dual clutch transmission, but they actually have their own inherent advantages uh, versus other styles of transmissions. The first one being they have the theoretical potential to maximize performance. And what I mean by that is they will allow for the best possible acceleration because they can put the engine RPM at peak horsepower and just let it sit there the entire time you accelerate. This is probably the reason why it got banned from Formula One, because the team that tried it out had this huge advantage from an acceleration standpoint where you can just leave the engine at peak horsepower. The other advantage of being able to continuously adjust what gear ratio you're using is from an efficiency standpoint. So if you think about an engine that is at, say, 6,000 RPM with the throttle barely open, uh, it is very inefficiently creating, let's say, 20 horsepower. And then if you talk about an engine that's at maybe 1,000 RPM and the throttle is wide open, well, it's probably quite efficiently creating 20 horsepower. And somewhere between those two is the actual sweet spot of efficiency, meaning creating a certain amount of power using a certain amount of fuel, as, as little fuel as possible. And so what a CVT is able to do is hunt down that exact RPM. And that's a very weird behavior of CVTs because you can be in this car right here and I've watched it, it's very weird to watch. You can be accelerating as your RPM slowly drops. And that's unlike any other transmission style out there. You never see your RPM dropping as you're accelerating unless you know you're shifting gears. But while you're in a gear, of course, in a traditional automatic or DCT, you watch those revs climb up and then they drop down. Here you can watch them steadily decline as you accelerate. And so why would it do that? Well, it's seeking that efficiency point. You wanna have your throttle as open as possible. You want your engine load to be as high as possible while your RPM is relatively low because that maximizes efficiency. Now, why they still can't seem to match the efficiency of the manual transmission, I'm not quite sure. Perhaps there's some losses within the CVT. Perhaps uh, the weight benefit of the manual helps it out. All of that is to say, theoretically, a CVT offers better performance and better efficiency. Not necessarily true in the real world, uh, but in theory, they offer both of those benefits. It's simply going to be down to the application and how it's actually implemented of whether or not you get those advantages. And then finally, the big advantage that a CVT has uh, versus a dual clutch transmission, and especially because it is using a torque converter, as you can see, you have very good low speed control. You don't have that rough start like you can have with dual clutch transmissions because dual clutch transmissions are using a clutch for that really slow movement, and that means having slip within that clutch, and so you can get some judders within the vehicle. Same with a manual transmission. You don't have extremely good low speed speed control like you get with a torque converter. There's reasons why vehicles like the Acura ILX have used a torque converter with a dual clutch transmission and it feels super redundant because you know you have a solution in place, you have those clutches in place so you might as well use them but in the case of something like the CVT where you need that torque converter it's like the low speed control is so good. So there are real advantages to using a CVT. Now, like all things, it is not all good news. Uh, there's a couple disadvantages here and a couple things that are a bit of a bummer. First of all, this is the highest trim of WRX offered, and unfortunately, the only option is a CVT. So that doesn't make sense to me. Why would an enthusiast car only offer the best tier with a CVT? So two of the big things versus the other trims of the WRX, you get electronic dampers with the WRX GT, which we are in, and you get these Recaro seats. You cannot get those with a manual transmission. And maybe they're doing what Ford did uh, with the Sasquatch package on the Bronco, or what Toyota did with the Supra where later somehow magically oh we listen to our customers and now we offer a manual transmission it's like these are like planned events that are planned way ahead of time and then they say oh okay here's a way to keep our product relevant a couple years later so my hope is eventually they offer the manual transmission with this uh, and they say we listen to our customers and we get it but we will see if that happens the other bummer is the STI is gone right 
So now the most expensive WRX you can get is only offered with a CVT. That's just a shame because the STI was manual only uh, and it had serious performance advantages over the WRX. Now that's gone, so this is the best WRX and you get a CVT. That's a bit of a bummer. And finally, tuning potential. Now, truthfully, I think most people who are going to tune their WRX are gonna go for the manual transmission. Uh, that's just more the enthusiast style, you know, get a manual transmission, tune your vehicle, that seems to check out more than I'm gonna get a CVT and modify my car. Uh, but that said, CVTs have been known historically to have torque limits. There are ways to get around this, uh, but historically they're used in relatively low torque applications. So if you're talking about modifying your WRX and you have a CVT, we don't know what that torque limit is at this point, uh, so it may not be the best thing to do with this style transmission. It may make a lot more sense just doing that with the manual uh, and seeing whether or not it can hold that power. So from a tuning standpoint, personally, I would go with the manual if you're planning to modify the car. But personally, I'd go with the manual regardless. It has its benefits. It's more fun to drive in my opinion, but this is a great transmission, okay? People rag on CVTs. Drive this thing, you would never know. If it was in manual mode and no one ever told you it was a CVT, you would never know. You'd be like, wow, this is a really great transmission. I'm really impressed by it. Then someone would say, oh, it's a CVT, and suddenly you don't like it anymore. Let perception guide you rather than knowing what style of transmission is it. Just feel it and see what it's like. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad, like all things. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.